Having taught American history throughout my entire career, I have always been committed to the importance of history in general and American history in particular. I have felt that too many students walk away from an American history class bored and feeling that facts and names and dates are the essence of history. It's not true. History is a great story. It's a human story. And to project that story is nothing more important and nothing more fascinating. George Marshall, our great leader in World War II, actually the man whom Franklin Delano Roosevelt said was the architect of our victory in World War II, went to VMI, the Virginia Military Institute, same school that Thomas Stonewall Jackson, the great Civil War hero, went to, and was once asked, did you learn uh, something important at VMI? How was your education at VMI? He said it was a failure. And they were astonished. How could George Marshall say such a thing? And he said they didn't teach American history at VMI, and every leader has got to know American history. I would like to add a footnote to that and say that every student and every American should know American history. Abraham Lincoln, uh, arguably our greatest president, once talked about those mystic chords of memory stretching back to every battlefield and every hearthstone and every soldier's grave. In that, he invoked the better na angels of our nature. And if we don't invoke the better na angels of our nature, surely we will succumb to the worst uh, angels of our nature. And that has also happened throughout our American history. You know, many of our presidents have been victim either of assassinations or assassination attempts. Going back to Andrew Jackson, who was a victim of an assassination attempt. And of course, Abraham Lincoln was our first martyred president a man who brought the Union together and ended slavery at a terrible price. 750,000 Americans lost their lives, both North and South. That means in the Civil War, more Americans were killed than all of our other wars combined. And that includes from the Revolutionary War to the current. And that's an astonishing concept. So Lincoln knew how important American history was. And we had other uh, presidents assassinated. James Garfield, a great Civil War hero, by the way, a general in the American Civil War, was assassinated in the early 1880s. William McKinley, another uh, Civil War veteran, fought at Antietam, was assassinated in 1901. Teddy Roosevelt, his successor, was a victim of an attempt he was shot, and only the fact that he was wearing a watch bob and the bullet struck the watch bob in his chest saved his life. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the victim of an attempt, and the mayor of Chicago, sitting right next to him, inches away, was killed in that assassination attempt. Anton Cermak, the mayor of Chicago. Harry Truman was living at the Blair House. The Blair House was named after one of Lincoln's cabinet members. He was also the victim of an attempt. His life was saved, but one of his guards was killed in the early 1950s. Then, of course, the tragic assassination of John F. Kennedy, which shattered the nation's consciousness and self-confidence. Uh, General Ford was the victim of a number of assassination attempts, at least two. Ronald Reagan was badly wounded. So throughout our history, we have had those who have really demonstrated the worst named angels of our nature. Now, I want to mention in particular one who was assassinated. In 1934, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was asked, who is the most dangerous person in the United States? And Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, I'll give you two. Douglas MacArthur. Wow, Douglas MacArthur. Why? Because when the World War veterans were promised their bonus after World War I and went to Washington in 1932, Herbert Hoover was the president, they were demonstrating, and Herbert Hoover ordered Douglas MacArthur, general of the army, to break up the demonstration. He fired on some of the men whom he had served with in World War I, just 14 years earlier than that, 
and killed some of them. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt never forgave him. The other, he said, was Huey Long. Huey Long was a governor of Louisiana. They called him the Kingfish. He was also a United States senator. He was a demagogue of the first order. Huey Long would do anything and everything to attract people by inciting fear and division and anger. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt said he's the greatest threat to the United States. He himself was assassinated on the Capitol steps of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, by a young doctor whose father was destroyed by Yuri Long. For example, one of the things that Yuri Long had for all of the people that he appointed in his administration was for them to immediately write a letter of resignation and sign it. But he said, don't put the date in. And he would put the date in as soon as any one of them got out of hand. So they lived under that fear of being fired by the kingfish of Louisiana. Well, I, as a footnote, Yui Long's uh, murderer, this young doctor, was killed immediately, and his widow, a very young woman who had an 11-month-old baby, couldn't stay in Louisiana, so she moved east, and she changed her name back to her maiden name, which was uh, Yvette, Yvette Bourgeois. Well, the reason I mention this is because Yvette Bourgeois became a librarian on Long Island. She became the head librarian of the Farmingdale High School Library. And if you live on Long Island and ever get to Farmingdale High School, if you go to the library, you will see the name of that library is the Yvette Bourgeois Memorial Library. Because when she died in the late 1970s, they honored that library by naming it in her memory. But we have, of course, other demagogues. 1950s, we have the McCarthy period where Joseph Welch finally said to Senator McCarthy, Sir, at long last have you no sense of decency, because he destroyed lives by real or imagined fictions that he conjured up to destroy these lives, accusing them of communist leanings, socialist leanings, and he was a terrible demagogue of that period in history. One of my favorite actors was Julius Garfinkel, Julius Garfinkel, the reason I mentioned him was he was born in the Bronx and he didn't want to go to school. And the first Italian-American principal of a, of a junior high, Angelo Patria, went to Julius Garfinkel's parents and said, get your son to school. I guarantee that he will learn something in my school that he will love. And he dragged this Julius Garfinkel to school and Julius Garfinkel fell in love with two subjects, history and acting. He loved acting so much that when he was 17, he went to California on his own, changed his name to John Garfield. John Garfield was one of the great actors of the late 30s, 40s, but he was caught up in the hysteria of the McCarthy era. And he would not name names, because so many of his friends, like Lee J. Cobb, another great actor, and some of the great playwrights of the time uh, were involved, and he would not rat them out but he, had, he himself was destroyed. He never made another movie, never. He died at the age of 39 in 1952. Those are the kinds of things that history should teach us because whenever we're confronted with a demagogue, whenever we're confronted with somebody who tries to divide us on the basis of fear and anxiety and, and, and the worst impulses of our nature, American history, I think it'd be a comforting solace and an education for all of us. So that is why I taught history, that is why I love history, and that is why I communicate that love to my students and hopefully will continue to do that. Because you've got to learn to read in order to read to learn, and by reading to learn history, I think will serve everyone in our country well.